I will start by reading our vision statement. The Ashland Public Schools cultivates the academic and social emotional growth of each student through a supportive, collaborative, innovative, and challenging environment. Students will develop into self-motivated, resilient, lifelong learners who embrace their role as responsible contributors to a global community. This meeting is being recorded by WACA Cable TV. This is our Friday morning COVID meeting, as usual, our order of business, open session, opening procedures, call to order, agenda review and adoption. There will be time for public comment if anybody appears. And our items include COVID-19 update, phases, models of learning, status of athletics, and then we will adjourn. So I will just take the roll call and make sure everybody's okay with this order of business this morning as usual. Kathy Bates. Here and yes. Paul Kendall. Here and yes. Mark Terry. Here and yes. And Aaron Williams, I don't believe is here at this time. Um, I will start by asking if there is anybody from the public who would like, or anybody here who would like to give comment before we get started. And then seeing none, uh, Jim, I will go right to you for the COVID-19 update, please. Sure, I will share the document. We'll get right into it um, this morning. Okay. Should be a little bigger there. Everyone can see. Yeah, it. that looks good. As you can see, uh, we we you know still up um, cases from the prior couple weeks, but down ten from last week. Uh, you know, we just had uh, an outbreak. Ed, would you call it an outbreak? <laughs> um, at at the Dream Station uh, in um, in Ashland that impacted. Uh, the Ashland Public Schools in, in really two ways. One, um, one of the workers is from Ashland, uh, but then they were positive. Therefore, we had to, uh, you'll notice down here under the context, there were 17 students that had to be quarantined um, from Warren and Mendez because that, that employee uh, was, uh, those kids were considered uh, close contacts to that employee. Uh, so just that, as an FYI, uh, that's why you'll see uh, the numbers of quarantine students um, go up. Um, then other than that, uh, in that notice, that was the, the email I sent out last night um, within the Ashland High School community, um, uh, a, a positive case. So uh, other than that, we're still, you know, firmly ensconced in the yellow. Um, you know, our positivity rate certainly went up a little bit, but it's below the 5%. Uh, our seven day rate went down compared to last week's uh, at 24, we're down to 17. Um, and, you know, hopefully it, we did see in, in surrounding towns, a little uptick as well. Um, you'll notice in the athletic and the Tri-Valley League, very slight ticks up um, with the exception of, of Norwood, which, which went down. Um, so, and other than that, honestly, we're, we've just been focusing our attention on getting ready for the April 5th opening. Uh, all of the desks have arrived. Um, so they've been putting them in classrooms, uh, setting up the, the cafeteria for in the gymnasium for cafeteria use, uh, things of that nature. First rounds of the pool testing uh, were this week. Uh, results are not in from yesterday yet, uh, but the results from Monday uh, were all negative. Uh, Kelly, I don't know how many more folks have, have reached out to you to sign up, but I've had a few parents reach out to me uh, and are signing back up. So we'll be interesting to see what the numbers are next week. Um, I haven't had any. Okay. So they may just be doing it directly. Uh, there's a database I have to print out for, for Kelly and, and Aaron to look at and compare. And the last component of an update is um, vaccinations. I think it's important. I, I, um, we're probably... Not all faculty and staff uh, feel comfortable emailing where they stand within the um, vaccination protocols and process. Uh, it's not required for them to tell us, but um, based on the data we have, over 70% of our staff uh, currently has been vaccinated and or is in the uh, pipeline to be vaccinated. Uh, and But in the next two weeks, we should see actually just about 70% um, before we come back to school, uh, we'll have had both shots. Uh, based on the data that I've been able to collect, um, which is a pretty high number. Um, so 
that's exciting uh, from a, uh, the vaccination standpoint. So quarantining, again, you'll notice it's a, it's a higher number than last week, uh, but a lot of it's contributed or attributed to uh, the 17 students and more families in travel. Um, there were so a lot of college visits are happening now, April vacation. Uh, families are, are certainly um, going to be looking at going and visiting schools, which are now opening for, for people to come and see. I've had a lot of parents reach out and say, hey, we're going to follow the, obviously the, the policy, but we're just giving you the heads up that we are traveling uh, to, to look at colleges. Um, and most, Ed, again, correct me if I'm wrong, most of what our quarantine and our positives, we have, we have eight positives uh, currently on the books that are quarantined. Uh, those are household transmissions. So um, is that correct, Ed? That, that's correct. And the, um, <clears throat> the 17 from the Dream Station, if we've reached, we spoke to all of the parents yesterday. Um, if, um, if they choose to get their child tested this Saturday, tomorrow, they'll be eligible to actually to come back to school on Tuesday. Great. Jim, just uh, can I ask a couple of quick questions? Of course, yeah. Um, so one um, related just to the high school case, so there's one positive was that, so you are to add. Yeah. <clears throat> was that a household transmission as well? That That's gonna be a tough question. We, okay. She potentially was, <clears throat> It could have potentially been the household or elsewhere. We we haven't been able to figure out where it could have been one of two places. Yeah. But not not in school. No. no, 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 no. And it could have been. It actually could have been even at Dream Station. I mean, there there are a couple. So um, it could have been an adult to adult mark uh, gotcha. there. Okay. Yep, but not not in school. Nope. Um, second quick question, Jim, is I think you held a, a webinar earlier yeah. in the week on the. We'll test it. I don't know if you can give us an update on that. Sure. Um, I can give you a quick rundown. We had about 75 folks sign up and about 28 show. Um, so um, not, not real fruitful in terms of the number of folks who attended, but we did pick up probably five to 10 students from that uh, who re-signed up or re-enrolled uh, in, in taking um, the pool testing. It, it clarified some things. I, I think it was more the email I sent out with the link and the actual video uh, helped um, folks make some decisions too. So, um, and then just the last question is: um, the state changed its travel order to a travel advisory, so yep. nothing is required anymore. And I haven't gone back to look at what our policy, what that, what the implications are of that for our policy. Um, you know, I know we just amended the policy. And I don't know if this is something maybe all Kathy can speak to is the policy subcommittee, but are, is, does that basically negate anything in terms of what we're expecting parents to do for uh, travel trips? Um, you know, I'll let Paul answer from the, how he views it from the policy standpoint, but um, we're still asking families to report that they're traveling and to provide um, the, if it's overnight, the, the PCR test, um, so that 72 hours before um, we, we've just changed, I'll be sending it out today, our, our, um, our form that we ask folks to fill out. So that, that will be forthcoming today. Um, so to answer your question, Mark, our, our policy referenced the order. Right. Um, yeah. So which is no longer in effect. Right. Um, so at the end of the day, the, the goal of the policy was to follow what the state was doing at that point. And um, so I don't think, it, I think, I think it's, it has an effect in that they changed. So what their, what our expectation has changed. And so now they're not required to do that. Um, they're advised to do that. And so, right. so we're in alignment with that. So we can, you know, I don't know that there's any value in, you know, uh, adjusting the language at this point from an order to an advisory, but um, because I think that's, yeah, there's, there's no, there's effectively no difference to it um, from a, Hey, if there's not, if the, if the order's not there, they don't have to because it's an advisory anyway. So um, I, I would probably just recommend leaving it as is. And then at which time there's no longer an advisory, there's no longer the uh, 
state of, state of emergency, then we would just remove the policy. And that's all I had with regard to COVID update. Um, April 5th is the, obviously the elementary coming in and April 12th is the middle and the high school. Is there any, you said that the desks have come in. Um, yep. Any other challenges you're facing with those dates uh, at all or? No, not yet. <laughs> I mean, Aaron Palini might tell you otherwise, but um, <laughs> from a, just making sure the transportation is all squared away, but it's sort of, it's making sure that we have the numbers, Paul, and she's been working steadfastly on getting uh, the, the K-5 up and running first um, and then the, the 912. But I don't think we're seeing a tremendous amount of families who are requesting uh, busing. I think the challenge will be for our principals and assistant principals and deans to uh, navigate the number of folks who are driving and dropping off. I think that's going to be the challenge. Yeah. Do, do, we, do, we, do we think we need any, any help or support from uh, the police or anything we, like Yeah, that? we will. Yes. Yep. And we'll, we've reached, we have SROs and we'll be reaching out and making sure that they're um, understanding um, and as well as the, the rest of the police department. Um, yeah, because it's concerning if we don't have any additional yep. people signing up for well, buses. Well, we have additional. I'm just saying it's not a flood of everybody. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. if it's not substantial and yeah, that pick up and drop off sound like a it's gonna be a nightmare. Yeah. But Paul, can I um ask um I, I actually that it's a question for everybody, but I guess the only reason maybe to revisit the policy and just having the right word in there is the expectation from us, you know, when it's an advisory, you can either do it or not do it, but does the district prefer <laughs> that? Um, everybody follows the the advisory, and if so, do we need to adjust for that, or are we all good with whatever the state is doing? Well, so is your question because the advisory is is hey, you know, this is optional to do, right? Um, so, so are we it, saying it's optional, or are we saying we'd prefer that you follow the advice? Right. So, so it would be a substantive change to say, hey, listen. You're not just you're not. It's not. It's no longer a recommendation from there. We're we're telling you you must follow their recommended guidance and not make it optional. Is that, so that's the that's the real question, right? That's the question. I'm just wondering. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page about it. And if we need we need to follow the advisory in terms of making whatever we're doing work or not. Um, any. Yeah. I don't have a particular preference at the moment, but I'm just wondering if we're all on the same page about that. Yeah, I guess to add to Lori's, I have a question, Paul. What do you see as the consequence for April vacation? Are you, the way it's written, it's optional, but would we still want to be knowing at that point, especially for contact tracing and quarantining the travel? Well, so, yeah, I mean, so right now, the the policy actually greatly aligns with what the um, the advisory is. So it says follow that. And by the way, we also recommend going beyond it. We're not for it. We're not, you know. So we've already taken the stance of, hey, even that seventy two hours before you even get back was okay, um, and we weren't requiring people to show us proof that they did it. They were just saying that that, that that was our expectation. So from my perspective, I don't see uh, any substance difference in, in, in making changes. I think it's where we, I, I think the, where our intention of landing is consistent, but I, I, I mean, I'd, yeah. Audrey and Ed, what, what are your thoughts? Uh, would you like us to take a different approach from your perspective or? The nurses and um, with the help of Claudia have been going around and around and around on this because it's now an advisory, we can't really enforce it. However, the policy does say that you're supposed to notify your administrator. So if they're notifying the administrators, the nurses and myself feel that it's good for us to know who's traveling. Yes, we can enforce it. Um, and Claudia helped fill out a new form and it gives them the guidelines to follow. If they get a PCR test, that's a bonus. If they don't, at least we know for contact tracing reasons who's traveled and who's been out of the district. So we can 
still have our spreadsheet. We can still track the kids who are traveling. My guess is if a parent is going to fill out the form, they're going to follow through and do the testing is, is what I'm, I'm hoping, which what I'm thinking. And then those that don't want to tell us, I guess That's we can't force it. There's no, there's no meat to the, and no teeth to the travel order or the travel advisory. So that's what how we that's how we're looking at it. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's our approach. Can I ask a follow-up question on that, Audrey or Ed? Um, do we have a sense of, of how many positive cases, if any, we've had over the course of the year related to travel? We we I think we had five around the Christmas break, but none around the February break. Correct? Correct. So we'd be we'd be quarantining a lot of people. If we if we were to kind of maintain the way it used to be, or go back to say so that's our policy, even if it's different, um, we we catch a fairly small number compared to the number of quarantines. Um, but I think and, a lot more people are traveling out of the state now. It looks like yeah. there's a lot of yeah. people traveling. It's, they're not going to New Hampshire. They're going to Florida. Right. They're going a lot of places. Yeah. You know, although I would imagine the. The, we saw the biggest uptick in Thanksgiving and Christmas time frame because those are in inside large family gatherings and things like that. Probably most of the travel now is outside. Yeah, and, yeah. family uh, union. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I would, because right now, remember, we have two policies. The, the only real difference is in the notification where we say, must. Our expectation is that the students still must right. fill out the travel form. They don't have to provide any proof that they followed through on anything, but we're still, you know, saying that we are actually saying you must fill this out if you're traveling, just to have the information for all the reasons that Audrey mentioned um, on the employee one, just because of our agreements and things like that. It's uh, it's a request but essentially we are still re requesting the notification, uh, just not requiring the proof of any follow through. So in, in practical terms, the, the, the advisory from the state still says, <clears throat> if you go out of state overnight, that you should either get a test before or after, right? three days, 72 hours before or after you get back. Right. No, and so we would as long as you return within 24 hours, you're okay. So like I said, I said overnight, more than Over. you're right, 24 hours, yeah. but <clears throat> so it's still basically saying people should do this. It right. just isn't requiring people to do that. Right. That's realistically that's what we're saying too, is people should be doing this. We'll be encouraging people to do that, letting them know that they should do that. But if people lied to us before. <clears throat> and chose not to participate and do what they should, you really weren't going to be able to catch it anyway. So, you know, hopefully the, the people who are going to do the right thing are going to do the right thing, you know, and it probably is fine to leave their policy where it is. Then. I, I, I loved Audrey's reaction to your, to, to the, your lie. lie comment. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe the stories that, that we... Oh, you know. I probably would. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you might. <laughs> yeah. so. You mean that actually happened? <laughs> All right. I, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, at least for, for myself, Lori, to your question, it, you know, feels like as long as we're still encouraging people to do the things that the state is encouraging people to do, I think that's a, a fair place to land, for, at least for me. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that, especially Ed and Audrey, we're going to have access to whatever information they needed, you know, to make their jobs easier if it becomes a contract tracing issue and all kinds of other stuff that comes along with us just being able to have a handle on what's going on. Um, but if the policies, the way that they're written, cover all of that to the best that we can right now in order to line up with what the state is doing, I'm, I'm fine with that. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, and, and, and we also the, the, we say follow that. And then we also say, they're encouraged to get a PCR test after the completion of travel as well. So we're, right. we're encouraging them to go beyond even, you know, yeah. consistent with what we were asking before without the five day thing. We're, we're still requesting that they do that. We're encouraging yeah. them. Fair enough. 
All right, any other questions? Are Jim, are, is that, are you done with the update? And uh, with the exception of Audrey, just let me know. She just sent me a text that uh, all the pools from yesterday came back negative. So. Excellent. So, so we've had two, two days, two experiences with the pool coming back negative so far. So that's great. And obviously you're recommending that we stay in the same model of learning for next yeah. week before yeah. we make the shift on April 5th. That's the first shift, right? Correct. And, we don't and then training. is there anything, Stephen, on athletics? Are you here still? Yeah. Is there anything that we need to know there? Good morning. No. Good morning. No, the, the only thing there was a um, change in guidance around spectators, but I don't have a recommendation at this point. That'll be uh, for next week. We need to look into it. So, okay. Okay. Excellent. So, Jim, real quick, if, if the participation in the pool testing doesn't significantly improve, what are your, what is going to be your recommendation after this free period? Um, I don't know yet, to be honest with you. It's some it's a conversation that Ed, Audrey, and the nursing staff and I have to have. Um, that being said, uh, there's there's going to be probably an announcement uh, with regard to pool testing and availability of pool testing for districts probably in the next week uh, about with regard to cost. So I would I would hold off on making any determinations until that announcement comes out. Well, and, and with. It sounds like the dreadful uh, participation, regardless of whether they signed up or not. At some point, that value proposition of even the time, time and effort yep. of our yep. staff may not be worth it, regardless of cost, right? Right. So that, but that's part of the conversation we need to have is maybe there's a different building, Paul, that would would supply us with a greater percentage of participation. Okay. So, so that's you know maybe you know. The Mendez School. Maybe we might get more parents willing to to sign their children up to participate. So that's a conversation we we wanted to get it rolled out to see what it looks like, to see what the process is. Uh, I think we have a really good process. Uh, the, the nursing staff, when I met with them Monday, I went to the schools, collected all the samples, um, and then you know went to the high school to ask about the, the students, uh, and they seem to be um, while it's a lot of work on a Monday morning. Uh, to come in and do it. They were certainly pleased with the, the process. Kelly, I don't know about yesterday. Uh, if it, again, every time they do it, it's probably going to get a little bit easier and quicker and more efficient. But, um, but participation, yeah, is a concern. And maybe we, you know, think about using it in a different facility if there's more parents willing to sign up. So. Process went well yesterday, but we had uh, more students than Monday not show up. They had signed up. Right. So I think you uh, know, we had a lot of students who thought they were signed up. Um, so their parents are probably in the process of signing them up. Right. Kelly, does, if, does that, if, does that go ahead, Mark. Lori. No, no. I was just going to say if they showed up and they weren't actually registered, were they able to still participate or no? No, no. because okay. they have to. Yeah. So, yeah. Kelly, when you said that people didn't show up, does that mean that their parents registered them? They didn't come down to when do they the were test? Called. Right. They were called, they didn't show up. Right. And do we do anything to let the parents know that? Yes. Yes. Okay. I send emails. I'll do that today. Okay. And I did that on um, Tuesday as well and um, had a lot of people reach out. You know, students might have been absent. We weren't checking that. Um, parents were going to remind students. Yeah. Kelly, I was going to ask if do you feel like there's any embarrassment on the part of the students while being in class and being like one of very few? who would have to leave to go do this? Um, I didn't get that sense from anyone. And a lot of them came before school even started. Okay. We were sending them down okay. as soon as we opened the doors. Good. Yeah. But it seems like the feeling's mutual in terms of like, you know, to take your time to do the tweaks and see if we can get the participation up and see how long um, the cost will be covered, if it's going to be extended. But it, it, if without, you know, meaningful participation to spend any kind of big money on this <laughs> is probably not going to be something that we support right correct but but you but you need some time to figure that out so it's free right now let's see where we are right okay anybody else with any questions or comments about any of this before we adjourn for the weekend 
No. Nope. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor, Aaron? Aye. Kathy? Aye. Paul? Aye. Mark? Aye. And I here. And thank you all. Have a great day. Have a great week. Thanks, Sarah. See you next week. Bye. Bye.